This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1101, Making the Biggest Decisions by Tynan of Tynan.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, the guy that reads to you every single day of the year, including weekends and holidays, to help you optimize your life. Today's post being from Tynan. Before we get to it, I'll be getting my vitamins and supplements from Care Of. It's a monthly subscription vitamin service that separates out your vitamins daily into individual packets and personally tailored to your exact needs. And it ends up costing like 20% less compared to similar brands. And for 25% off your first month of personalized care of vitamins, just visit takecareof.com and enter the promo code OLD. That's the code OLD for 25% off your first month at takecareof.com. I'll tell you more about how that works after the reading. So for now, let's get to today's post as we optimize your life. Making the Biggest Decisions by Tynan of Tynan.com. I wanted to write a post about making the biggest decisions. Before doing so, I thought I'd jot down some of mine and look for commonalities. What surprised me most was how few decisions of this magnitude there were. Depending on where I set the bar, I've probably only made 10 huge decisions in my entire life. I made the first about 20 years ago, so I make one every two years. Here are some of what I consider to be the biggest decisions. Dropping out of school, deciding to travel around the world for an extended period of time, moving to Las Vegas, as well as other moves, living in an RV, focusing entirely on pickup for one or two years, and getting married. It was interesting to realize how few there were, especially while keeping in mind the enormous changes they've made in my life. In other words, they're even higher leverage than I subconsciously consider them to be you may be surprised at some things that aren't on that list. I consider my group real estate purchases to be relatively small decisions. While they've had a big impact, none of them were huge investments or difficult to decide. I don't count starting or stopping various businesses because I just assume that if I didn't start Cruise Sheet, for example, I would have started something else. And those decisions are also easy. I'm not actually married yet, so we can discount that one for the sake of discussion. If you're familiar with my work though, you probably know about the others. They were all pivotal points in my life that radically changed my results. It is of course impossible to know if any of them were the right decisions. To me, they feel like they are because I'm 100% satisfied with my life and all of them were major contributors. But perhaps if I didn't travel, something much better would have happened during that time. Hard to imagine, but I would have never imagined my life as it is anyway. The thing is, This is always how these decisions are. You never know whether you made the right ones or not. It's important to be comfortable with that because if you aren't, then you will be scared to make the decisions. Big decisions can be scary and that's how they're sometimes supposed to be. Part of the skill in making these decisions is being comfortable with that discomfort and having faith in yourself to make the best of them. The biggest mistake I see people make with big decisions, ironically, is thinking too much about them. Around half of mine were time sensitive and would have been more difficult or impossible if I deliberated too long. In the same way that debt insidiously siphons money out of your bank account without you really noticing, excessive deliberating siphons away your years. I think we all know plenty of people who stayed at a job or in a relationship for years too long or waited years to start a project or make a move they should have done years ago. If you look at my list, I literally did not take more than a day to think about any of the big decisions I made. I always had it in the back of my head that I would probably drop out someday, but I did it on the same day that I seriously considered it for the first time. I bought my place in Vegas the same day I found it, even without seeing it. Within 15 minutes of seeing a spot open up in the Project Hollywood pickup house, I committed to move. The first time my fiance and I talked about getting married in the near future, we set a date three months out. I tried very hard to come up with a big decision that I considered to have worked out poorly. I can't think of any. The closest I can come up with are a few investments I've made, but overall my investments have drastically outpaced the market. And as an ex-pro gambler, I know it's the nature of the game that not every bet will pay off. I can, however, think of times where I made a mistake by not making a decision fast enough. There were relationships that I knew should end, but I put off by months. There are several businesses I should have started early or ended more quickly. This isn't so much about me as much as it is about the nature of these sorts of decisions. With the right attitude and a little bit of grit, I think that very few of what we see as biggest decisions actually end up poorly. In most cases, 
these decisions fit the mold of having very large potential upsides and very small potential downsides. We're often more scared of the uncertainty of the situation than we are with the actual worst case scenario. For example, it might be scary to drop everything and travel around the world, but at the end of the day, you can always fly back. If it turns out it's not for you, you've paid for a plane ticket or two more than you should have. If it is for you, then maybe you've changed your whole life. Focusing on pickup was the one from my list that had perhaps the biggest potential downside. If it didn't work, I would have given up a year or two of productivity and I would have felt like an idiot, which is probably the more visceral and emotional downside. The upside was enormous though. While some alternative paths are unclear, I'm completely certain that I would not be in as good a relationship with as excellent of a girl as I am now. I simply didn't have the skills to find that person, let alone keep her. A fundamental bargain in life is the trading of discomfort for gain. We all do it, and the most successful among us do it a lot. With the asymmetry of big decisions, having huge tangible potential upsides versus moderate fear-based emotional downsides, it's important to build a habit and skill of taking the less comfortable path. Eventually, you get to the point where you're conditioned to enjoy the discomfort because you associate it with an eventual reward. This doesn't happen quickly, but it does happen. And when it does, you make even faster progress because these biggest decisions become hills rather than mountains. You just listened to the post titled Making the Biggest Decisions by Tynan of Tynan.com. So I recently tried out Care Of. It's a monthly subscription vitamin service made from effective quality ingredients and personally tailored to your exact needs. 90% of people fall short of FDA guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient. So I took their fun online quiz, which asks about your diet, health goals, and lifestyle and their recommendations are based on clinical research and from doctors and nutritionists. You'll get a 30-day supply with individually wrapped packets with your specific vitamins in them. Each packet has a little fact or quote on them. It's really nice, super convenient. And the price ends up being about 20% less when compared to similar brands at local drug and health food stores. So for 25% off your first month of personalized care of vitamins, visit takecareof.com and enter the promo code OLD. That's the promo code OLD for 25% off your first month at takecareof.com. And I have that linked in this episode's description. I'll leave it there for today. Hope you're having a great day. And I'll be back tomorrow for Minimalist Monday, where your optimal life awaits.